We've been waiting for Manchester United to get started in this transfer window. And I tell you what, things are hotting up quickly. Tyrell Malassia, he's number one through the door. Frankie de Jong, he's going to be following soon. And what about Lissandro Martinez? Man United in advanced negotiations with Ajax over a move for him. What if all three of those join Man United? What would Ten Hag's best 11 look like? This video is going to be a slight little bit of fun to take a look at what our potential best 11 could be if we sign those three players and what weaknesses there still might be for Eric Ten Hag to resolve with the rest of the transfers that we need to be making this summer. I'm looking forward to this one. I'm sure you are too. So make sure you drop a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. Go down there and hit that subscribe button. If you do enjoy this video by the end of it and you want to become part of the community, I'd love to have you on board. Hit that notification bell as well. But let's get into it. Let's talk about the starting 11. Now, this is the starting 11 as well, as it could be without any new signings. And you'll see down there, we've got Malasia, we've got De Jong, we've got Martinez. And there's only one that we can start on. And that, of course, is Malasia, which we know is done. Fabrizio Romano has given it the famous three words. Here we go. Now, the 22-year-old left back is going to be an exciting prospect for Manchester United. I don't know whether he's going to be Manchester United's starting left back at the beginning. But let's just say for all intents and purposes, he will. He comes in there for Luke Shaw. How will he change that left-hand side? Now, I've actually already done a separate full video on Malasia. So if you want to watch that, uh, type it into the channel, Malasia. On there, you'll see a full scouting report on him. But he is somebody who loves to get into this area here. He really, really does. He is a really aggressive and progressive fullback. And that's the buzzword. The big buzzword about all of these signings by Eric Ten Hag is the word progressive. Bringing the ball up the pitch from every single area. And that's where Malasia, De Jong and Martinez, they all align. There's a profile of these players that we are signing. You can see how we're going to start playing. The patterns will start emerging. But he is somebody who definitely will get forward more than Luke Shaw and stay forward more than Luke Shaw. I'd be interested to see. I said this last year with, um, I, I backed Aaron Wan-Bissaka to be the most improved player. Hot take, Sam. Very hot take. Because I thought he was going to establish a partnership with Jaden Sancho. Then Jaden Sancho started playing on the left-hand side more. But Malasia up here, given the overlaps there with Jaden Sancho. Let me go down there so you can see the full screen. He will get into these areas here and really provide dangerous crosses into the box in that zone. Ronaldo should be... A enjoying the idea of having a fullback who's really going to do that regularly. But Malasia is somebody who will be aggressive. He's athletic. He will run forward a lot. He'll win the ball in this area far more than Luke Shaw did. Does. Will do. He wins the ball higher. He presses higher. And he covers himself. He'll do a lot of slide tackles. He won't be intercepting the ball. He won't be going in between passing lines. But his recovery pace is fantastic. I think he'll be an excellent signing. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. And I'm looking forward to seeing where he fits in. But it gets more and more interesting when you start talking about Frankie de Jong. Now, I've still held back on the video that I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to do on how much of a transformative signing I think de Jong would be. But dropping him into this team here changes a lot straight away. And if I'm looking at who he's probably likely to drop him for, I would say Scott McTominay. But in realistic terms, I would actually expect probably that. I think I would expect De Jong to play that side. I'm not quite sure. I might be wrong on that one. But Frankie De Jong is the key to all of it. He's the key. He's the cog. He is the main centerpiece of everything. Not literally just being the centerpiece in the central midfield. But De Jong will drop here. De Jong will be the first person to receive the ball from our defenders, whether that's Maguire, Varane, or Martinez. We'll have a conversation about that in a minute. De Jong will drop deep. De Jong will make sure that the defence passes the ball to him so he can either progressively carry it forward himself or start the attacks with through balls, start the attacks with progressive passing. Manchester United have, have been so bad at holding a deeper line like that. Now, Martinez is going to change that more so than De Jong will, but De Jong's presence there will give the defence a confidence to step up a little bit more because they know full well that Frankie De Jong is there to receive that ball. He's there to bring it forward and he will always present himself as the option to our defence. The main thing that he's going to really revolutionise is our ability to play out from the back with the ball. And there's no doubt that with De Jong there, we're massively improved. I personally would still argue it's still a key weakness. Scott McTominay, I think, is somebody who Eric Ten Hag will coach into being a better player. 
It's no doubt that he's got natural physicality, temperament, attitude, work ethic. There's a lot of things that are natural to him, which every footballer needs. But he needs to be smarter. And in that position, you need a higher football IQ than McTominay has been showing for a, well, basically his, his United career to date. He's got a lot of good, but if he's going to play in that position, he needs to be a lot better. Because De Jong there, I think that's a weakness. His partner there is a weakness. McTominay, will he play there? Probably ahead of Fred. I think Fred's far better. Well, I think McTominay and Fred are far, both far better in this sort of number eight role rather than a number six role. But if we don't sign someone to play alongside De Jong, McTominay may well play there. Now, this is where I think it definitely gets really interesting because we can get excited. We can talk about De Jong all day long. And I will talk about De Jong all day long. I think he's going to be incredible. I think he's going to quickly become probably the favorite player for Manchester United fans and certainly my favorite player quickly. But I'd say this Martinez one is the transfer that I find most intriguing because of the options that it brings you. Now, Lissandro Martinez, we know what position he plays. He is a centre-back, first and foremost. 139 appearances there in his career so far at centre-back. But as you can see, he played like a majority of a season as defensive midfielder. He can also play on the le a left back as well. Thank you very much, Arsenal, for that. But just, just sitting there, just warming it up for us and allowing us to come in over the top. It's pretty weird that they... Honestly, I've done a video on that earlier. I'm sure you can... I did that yesterday, actually, on uh, what are Arsenal doing? What did they expect? That Ajax were going to accept their low ball offer and not just wait for United to come in? Or from them to really think about that, if you think... That's what I think. So, anyway... But look, we went after Yuri and Timber. And if you look at the profile of Lissandro Martinez, you can see a lot of the similarities in terms of pass completion, pass attempted, progressive passes, progressive carries. There's a lot of similarities. Yuri and Timber, far better. He's in a top one percentile for dribbles completed, but he's more of a right back centre back compared to Lissandro Martinez, who really is an out and out centre back or that central defensive midfielder. So as I said, that's where it gets interesting. Because if we go over here, I think Martinez, it's quite easy to see where on paper you think he would drop into. It would just be that, wouldn't it? It would be Martinez alongside Rafael Varane. By the way, I've said this off record, I'll go on record now. I think Rafael Varane could be incredible this season. If he can stay injury free, we keep talking about these new signings. Rafael Varane, we literally signed one of the best centre-backs in the world and injuries have stopped him. But inside this system... He could thrive alongside Martinez. And as I said there, the big difference that Martinez will bring to that back line is the ability for that back line's default position next season not to be on the edge of our own box, but more to be around about there. That's where I think Manchester United will want to play next season under Eric Ten Hag. And that, therefore, does this. And this is what Eric Ten Hag's system does and what he wants to achieve at Manchester United. He wants his fullbacks far closer to the halfway line as a default position rather than the edge of their own box. He wants his defenders to be pressing up a little bit higher because by doing this, you make the pitch smaller. You make it so that you can press as a team and as a unit much better in these situations. Then you can get Malasia doubling up with, with Jaden Sancho or whoever's playing on the left-hand side there, no doubt. This is what he'll want to see. And this is where, you, this is where Martinez would make the biggest difference. I would say anyway. Again, in terms of confidence, you've only got to look at the stats there. In terms of his, look at these stats. Passes completed, top 1%. Pass completion, 95%. Progressive passes, top 1 percentile. And progressive carries, top 4 percentile. He's not only fine with receiving the ball from David De Gea, Martinez will take that and he'll happily carry it forward a bit, carry it to De Jong. But the, as I said, the interesting conversation comes in that you could potentially do this right you could switch De Jong over to the right hand side you can bring Martinez through and into that midfield position you can drop McTominay down there and you can bring Harry Maguire in now the immediate response to that is probably that line because of Harry Maguire's lack of pace is going to have to drop back maybe six ten feet it's going to make United play that little bit deeper but we would have far more steel in midfield and quality if that if that was a partnership there. So I'd be interested to know what you think about Martinez because Martinez, there's no doubt he's being brought in to Manchester United first and foremost to play in that position right there, to play as a centre-back. But he can and has played as a defensive midfielder. So I'd like to know what you think in the comments. What would you say is our best eleven then? Would it be Martinez playing in that defensive midfield role? I might, I'm probably going to do a separate video on this uh, as we, as we probably next week, I think. 
For Martinez, I can completely understand why Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag are going after him aggressively. RL Malasia, awesome. 22-year-old, 17 million. He's either going to improve Luke Shaw or usurp Luke Shaw. And one of those two, both of those two situations, Manchester United win. Frankie de Jong, I've told you what I think about him. A completely transformative signing. And then Martinez, slotting him in there. Now, where are the key weaknesses you still think exist in this squad? You, could, you will probably say, look, well, maybe Anthony should be next after that. And I think a right winger would probably be the next thing I would go for. Anthony Langer, he's definitely going to be working for his chances. But you need two top players in every position. That's what City have got. Their, their second eleven is ridiculous. Therefore, we need somebody over there. We haven't really got one person who's, who's got that right wing as his own, let alone two. We've got Elanga, we've got Ahmad who can play there, Pedistri who can play there, but just youngsters who are trying to vie for that position rather than top quality like Sancho. We probably need that on the right wing. We also need a backup to Ronaldo, really. We're going to struggle, I think, this season, especially if we get an injury to Ronaldo. But what do you think about that? I said it was it's a nice, fun video to do. It's a bit of a predictions video because we will make more signings. But Christian Eriksen, where does he fit in there? I would wanted to do it to focus on De Jong, Malasia and Martinez and what the best 11 could look like. And if we're being honest, it's probably something like that. You can let me know what you think in the comments below about what I've said in this video. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV because this summer is hotting up, baby. Yes, please. John Murto, keep it coming, man. Keep it coming. <laughs>